Hey, hey, everybody, welcome on in. I am Jessica Putnam Phillips, and this here is the Clay Share Studio. Every week we do a live free broadcast for everybody. And tonight we are gonna do simple sculpted flowers and succulents. I'm gonna show you a really easy way to make your own flowers and succulents that anybody can do. Anybody. Think you can't do flowers and succulents? <laughs> you're wrong, you can do them. And I'm gonna teach you how, and it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be easy, and you're gonna love it. Now, those of you who are premium members already know that we do two other private broadcasts every week. So in addition to my weekly classes, the formal classes, we have this live broadcast. We also have prime time, which happens right after this for premium members. And we have Good Morning Clay Share on Monday mornings. So there's a lot always happening on Clay Share. This week we came out with a new class all about clays, C-L-A-Y-S, clay. Uh, and that was yesterday. So you can learn about clay, a little bit of clay history and a little bit about different clays and what they're good for. And we had one last week on setting up your Bailey slab roller. And tomorrow we're gonna have a little tutorial coming out on using a Roku device, those of you watching on Roku. And um, I'll be doing another one, I think my next one, I can't remember, cleaning your studio might be my next one that I've got coming out. I have to double check. It's either that or um, it, advanced ceramics, like what you need for a ceramic studio. So I think this is gonna be really fun. Now. If you like what you see tonight, and those of you who are premium members, you can already check this out. I'm gonna show you one way to make these little flowers and succulents right here. And I'll just, I'll just give a close up. I'm gonna go to camera two and we'll, we'll switch over. So you guys can see these are what we're gonna do tonight, these beautiful flowers. But I have a couple classes that you might wanna check out for reference. And those are one for the flowers, for roses. You should check out my wall. Um, envelope class. It's like a, it's a wall pocket, but you'll see it's got a couple different flowers on it. And I teach you how to make the flowers and the leaves and the whole pocket. And then I also have this incense burner incense holder right here. It's not glazed yet. It's only bisque. I still have to glaze it, but I teach you how to make that cute like lotus flower right there. And then also the mini succulent class, which is also a sculpture class. So check those out. And I do have another one, the tripod mug. I, I put some flowers on that as well. So you, you can put flowers and succulents on anything. It doesn't, it doesn't, you can use them by themselves and you can have them as a cute decoration. Um, you can make jewelry with them. Whatever you wanna make, it's entirely up to you. And I'll just give a succulent close up. How cute is that? And these are plants you can't kill. And I know many of us out there, if you're like me, I, I don't mean to kill my plants. It just happens. It's one of those things. So check those classes out. I know it's a lot. If you're not a premium member, you can sign up for a free seven day trial. And then guess what? You can make all kinds of things. So I'm gonna show a picture here. And what I, I'm really showing with this is the fact that if you make some flowers, you know, you can size them down and attach them when you're making. But you know, you get the idea. You can always put flowers on your pieces. You can just stick them on wherever you want to put them. But, but tonight's going to be about making the flowers. And I think, folks on Instagram, I'm going to have to adjust you a little bit so you get more of the down here part because that's where all the good stuff's happening. So hi, everybody. Hello from Australia. Hey, hey. And the other reason I wanted to share those links for those classes with you is this is live. And some people don't like the live format because there's Q&A and there's interruptions. It's not a nice solid flow. If you want a class that is uninterrupted, you can check out the classes I have. And those are not live, those are formal classes. So they're like workshops, this, but this is live tonight. So we're gonna have questions and I'm gonna give answers. That's how it goes. That's how it works on the live at five. All right, so these guys right here, cute, fun, easy. And once you make them, you uh, can stick them on things or just have them as a really cute paperweight. Now, this class, the mini succulent class, and I'll, I'll hold it up again. I am going to two. I just had to stop by Instagram. Because <laughs> the folks at Instagram didn't want to miss out. So this class, the mini succulent class that I teach you guys, this right here, I show you how to make the little pot. And then we put the top in. We put the succulents in it. Well. Tonight, we're gonna to make these bigger ones right here. 
but the fact is you can make the pots bigger and plunk it in there. So this is a little pot that we have. You can make these bigger ones and make a slightly bigger pot in, in it. It's going to be crazy. You're going to see how these are made and you're going to be like, and then you're going to be making them forever. All right. So I came up with a way to do the flowers on my own years ago. And then uh, maybe this has been available in the commercial baking industry for a long time. I don't know. But then I found these right here. And they are flower cutouts. And I got this one at Michael's right here. And it's two-sided. One side is one side straight. The other side has ruffles. And I think if we do a close-up of, uh, of uh, this one right here, you can see, see how one side is straight and one side is ruffled. See, so you cut and you get both those options with this cutter. So this is it. I got it from Michael's. It was like $2.99, but it was 20% off. So then it was like, I don't know, 60 cents off, so $2.39. Remember, I shouldn't do math when I'm live. And I saw this yesterday and I bought it. And I was like, wah, because I've been making these by hand, cutting them out, and I'm gonna show you and that's how I do the ones here on the wall envelope class. That's how I do that. But um, the little cutter is crazy because it's so fast. Yet, uh, and so some people say they think Walmart might have them. A lot of places might have these now. So there, and if you are a baker or you do something with like frosting and cake decorating, this might have been around forever. I don't know. I just found it. But I'm going to show you the way I do it, the way I figured it out myself, and then we'll do this. And while I was shopping, I had a different way of making succulents, my mini succulents. But then this, this was there. And let me see if I can find the packaging for this. Yes, fondant cutout set. It's just called the fondant cutout set. Um, let's see if I can share that. That's that, that, that's the packaging for it. See, there it is. And it's the same thing, smooth on one side, crinkly on the other. And that gives you, with this, this right here is what you're getting. So let's switch it around. See this? That's what you get. So this is the cutter, double-sided again. And it's crazy how fast you can make a succulent with this now. But I did it a different way to begin with, and we'll talk about that too, or you can you know, check out my class. Um, and, and then I've got another option using cookie cutters. So we're going to do all of it tonight because... It's Wednesday, it's April 21st, we wanna have some fun. And it's snowing in Vermont. So I figure if it's gonna snow on April 21st, whatever, I'm gonna make some stuff. So that's what's happening. It's beautiful afternoon, Amy says. Yes, it's just gorgeous. It's been freezing rain and now that freezing rain has turned to snow, I'm loving it. Um, usually by this time of the year, I live in Vermont. I expect six months of winter. When we get into the seventh month of winter, game over. I'm done. And we're in the seventh month of winter. I'm done. Like, I, 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 I did agree to only have, like, two weeks of summer. Yes, I do know that's part of Vermont. That's all you get, two weeks of summer. The rest is an exaggerated spring and just a tiny sliver of fall. I know that's what it is. But when winter decides to hang around for seven months, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> So it snowed in Toronto too. It's snowing in upstate New York. Ah, oh, and Patty has to stay out of Michael's or Joanne's. I hear you. Um, I also got this when I was in Michael's yesterday. Now, I have a couple other of these Wilton rollers. This is a great one. It's, it's a fish scale pattern. You can use it for dragon scales. You can do it mermaid mugs with it. All kinds of yummy good stuff. I do my butterfly feeder class. I use this. I love it. Well, I picked this one up. It's polka dots, bumpy little dots. So we're going to make pictures. We're going to do these in prime time next. Not in this broadcast, everybody. So you can all do the ah uh, together. But if you're a premium member, you get it. So you can go, yay. So we're going to make these later. And I'm going to use the polka dot rolling pin to do that. And what I love about these is most places that sell Wilton baking supplies will have these. They're really inexpensive. It was $8, again, 20% off. Actually, it was $8.99, 20% off that. 
it's cheap. I know, it's great. And you know, so, and I put some rollers in the Clayshare Amazon shop if you wanna check them out. They didn't have these. Well, they did. They were $21 on Amazon. Don't buy these on Amazon. Don't pay $21. That's crazy. So I put some others in the Amazon shop that are um, plastic, which I have used. And they have a lot of great plastic, they're actually called blown plastic uh, rolling pins. And they work fine if you're just trying to find some texture, if you teach kids, you want something inexpensive. I know I have my own line of rolling pins, but those, line, those rolling pins, I hand draw each design and they're, hand, they're cut one at a time here in the US from wood here in the US. So it's, it's a higher end item. And I get not everybody has the budget for that. So if you wanna put some texture in, check out the Clayshare Amazon shop. I'm not sure if Kevin has shared the link for that, but if not, he should do that. So you guys can check that out. And if you're interested in checking out my rolling pins, my rolling pins are sold at Sharon Hoppe, H-O-P-P-E, designs.com. And I've got a whole bunch of designs and she has her own designs that are lovely as well. So you can check those out too. So if you want something a little unique. Oh, yeah, this one is also a Wilton. I use this, um, what did we make with this? We did something with this a couple weeks ago. I have no idea what anymore. Any of you remember what we made with this? We made something. No idea what it was. I think the oval, did we make oval plates maybe? But this is another Wilton one. It does like squares. It's like quilted squares. So for very little money, you can get some great texture tools. So that's a good place to start. <laughs> Deb killed her garden, mowed the grass. Beautiful two days and then it snowed today. Yes, the owl. Yeah, we used that one on the owl class. The Owl Luminary class, that's what it is. <laughs> so you just ordered, Trudy said she ordered those cutters. Yeah, they are much faster. And I'm gonna show you the, what they're much faster than. So I'm just gonna cut off a little chunk of clay from my block here. This is B-Mix 5 with no grog. Just a mid-range stone there. Yeah, Easter plates, we made Easter plates. That's what it is. Yeah, we made these guys, wait, they're over here. Um, did we do, nope, they're not over here. They're at the other house. Okay, they're at my other studio, which is still being moved to this studio. So we're just gonna take this bit of clay and we're just gonna roll it out by hand. And I'm just going gently because I had hand surgery like two and a half weeks ago, so I had surgery on this hand and then four weeks later this hand. So in the last uh, six and a half weeks, I've had surgery on both hands. No, is that right? I think that's right. So I can do gentle little things, but I can't overdo it or my doctor will get mad at me and you guys will get mad at me too, right? Because <laughs> you're always watching out for me. And if you don't, who will? Because I am very bad at slowing down. Oh, you love the background. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So as I roll, I'm turning it a quarter of the turn, right? So we just keep turning and I lift it up because that releases it from the board. If you don't release it, you're not gonna be able to push it because you can just keep rolling and we just keep going and just keep rolling and rolling and we're not actually stretching the clay or thinning the clay at all. I think camera two needs to come up. It looks a little low to me. It might be fine when we get close, when we get to doing the actual pieces. So I would say maybe that was a pound and a half, maybe two pounds of clay. You know, this is a project you can do with scrap clay as well. Like when you roll out a big slab for making bigger pieces and then you don't use it all, you can make little flowers and succulents. You try to make me behave, exactly. <laughs> you try, they try, they try. It snowed in Arkansas yesterday, didn't it? I know. You just got one of my rolling pins, yay! Yeah, yeah, There, I love doing the rolling pins. I have 
not been able to draw because of my hands. Uh, one thing I'm looking forward to is being able to just sit down with a pad of paper and a pen and just draw. I miss, I miss that. And I, I originally stopped because the pain was so bad I couldn't draw. And then um, surgery, so I, I can't draw. But soon, 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 a few more, few more weeks, we'll be back. I tried drawing. I can hold the pen. It's just my, um, I need to practice. I'm like a beginner again. I, I have very bad control. My lines are not that great, so I got to work on that. All right, so I rolled this out. It's, you can, yeah, you can throw your slabs if you don't want to roll them. And you just go like that. I, I don't throw slabs much. Sometimes I do. So just smooth that out. Okay, so I'm going to show you the way that I started making little flowers. And let's just start with a, we'll just start with a little uneven edge piece here. And just scooch that over see where we are so you guys can see this. All right, so this is going to be something. I think Instagram folks, I'm going to, I'm going to hook you up and bring you down because if not, you won't be able to really see very well so you can see better and everybody else should be able to hear good. Oh, I got you in the way. Hold on. This is what happens when you try to be everywhere at once, right? I'm, uh, oh. <laughs> there we go. I think I got it. But yet, now you guys can't see. Hold on. We're going we're gonna to get it. All right. I'm sorry. Everybody at home, you're just going to have to, for the poor Instagram folks, you're going to have to live with the tip of my phone in the screen so that they, they can see too. We got to be, we got to, you know, be nice so that they can see as well. All right. So I'm just taking this little bit of clay, uh, eighth of an inch thick, sixteenth of an inch. You want them kind of thin. And it's a, it's a practice thing. Make, make some, and if they're too clunky and chunky and thick, make them thinner. So we're going to start, and I like to start with a straight edge. You don't have to, but, you know, we'll just cut it sort of straight. And then we're going to make little bumps. So I'm going to cut out bumps. And I like to make them vary a little bit. And they get a little smaller and a little smaller. Yeah, we'll stop there. That's fine. So you kind of look like um, the Loch Ness Monster in the water, right? It's the Loch Ness Monster swimming. And then you're going to take your plastic that you got floating around because, you know, we cover our pieces so they don't dry out. And you could use saran wrap at this stage, but saran wrap sticky. It likes to stick to everything itself. You and so we're just smoothing the edges. All right, so we have this right now. And then we're just going to start right here. And we're just going to roll this up. And as I roll, I'm just going to gently open it a bit. And really, alignment is up to you. Like you can stretch your clay a little bit if you want so that you get your petals lined up so they're not stacked like steps on top of each other. This one, there we go. I'll pull that around. So we just made a rose. How easy is that? Like pretty good, right? Fast, fast rose. So this is the way I, I've always taught how to make roses. And, um, you know, you start and you end up, this is, your, this is your cutoff, right? And then you just use this and cut another one. And you just keep making and you make them all different sizes. The longer you go, the more bumps, the fuller your blossom. Or you could go back and decide, well, that's great, but I need another petal because this over here looks a little empty to me. So let's do another petal. So you can always go and just cut another petal out. Right? And then the same thing with the plastic. Because we're cutting it uh, with a knife, it leaves sharp edges. Really no way around it other than smoothing it. And then, you know, you just take your petal, line it up on the side. Now you could cut each petal, and I know people who do each petal, one at a time, and you stick them on. And that is cool too. 
that works, right? That works really well. And then we just, and then look, we got another petal there. So that makes it more rounded. It was a little triangular, but I like that right there, what we got. So that's, that's how I made the flowers. Now, back here, you just squeeze all this together, right? And just sculpt it by pinching it down. Last week we made stamps in the live broadcast and then in the private broadcast we did pinch animals. So all that pinching we did comes in handy because you just smooth this out like a penguin's head. And then cut off it so that it's flat and then just tap it a bit so that it sits flat. Now, if you're gonna put them on a pot, you know, you make these when you attach your handle and then you stick them on right away. If you can't use them right away, wrap them really well in plastic or make yourself a damp box and put them in that and they'll sit there and wait for you until you're ready. This one's a little big. I would put this maybe on a, a big pitcher, like an iced tea pitcher or, or um, this size right here. My, flou my flower pitcher. See? Aww, how sweet would that be, right? Don't just put one though. If you're gonna put one on, put some leaves here and some leaves here to blend it in and maybe some smaller flowers going up, you know? So would I slip it on a piece or fire it separately? I would, yeah, so if I was gonna use this, and that's a good question, Lisa. If I was gonna use this, I would actually cut it down even more. You see, you see how much clay we have here? You're, you're gonna wanna take more off the back there, right? And then you'd slip and score it really well. Imagine this as a just made pitcher, leather hard, which you can make this with my flower pitcher class. And then, you know, make a couple because it's always nice to have a cascade of flowers, right? Or and make some leaves. We weren't gonna do a leaf, but guess what? A leaf. This, pay close attention. I don't want anybody to miss it. It's gonna happen. One side and the other side. Oh my goodness. You can make a leaf. You got this. You got this. So uh, we have a leaf on a flower. You wanna make your leaf extra fancy. You get a sculpting tool like this clay shaper. Ooh, look at that. Now we're fancy. And you stick that leaf on. You can stick it on the pot first if you want. And then you put your leaf on, get that good and attached. Mind you, this is a finished piece. This wouldn't work, but um, if it wasn't. And then you put your flower on, and then you get a leaf kind of wrapping up. And you can, I mean, you can actually take that leaf and form it to the rim and have it wrapping around there, right? And you would do this when the piece was leather hard. You'd slip and score everything, and you'd attach it really well. And I, I mean, I've gotten carried away where I drape the leaves all the way down the sides and... You just can have like the whole garden, like the hanging gardens right here on your handle. So, so do that and see if you love it. I think you would. And you can do succulents too, and we'll, we'll get to succulents. All right, so that right there, easy peasy. Now, if you bought that little doodad, and a bunch of companies make these to make this flower right here. I'll just stick them. So you can compare my homemade flower, uh, which was done really quickly here, to the one I did using the cutter. Uh, not, not really fair to me, because this has a ruffled edge. This has a straight edge, right? But it, it, you get an idea. Wow, that's pretty full. That's a big full bloom, because they're a little longer. And actually, we're going to do, I didn't do it the same way. I'm going to show you how to make a fuller bloom. And you could have done that with this one. We're going we're gonna to show you something cool. Oh, I'm going to show you something cool. And Trudy says, look at that wall space behind you for rolling pins. I could have three racks. I, I really could. Um, so like I said, you get a smooth side and you get a ruffled side. Just because I like ruffles, I'm going to use the ruffled side. So you just press it into your clay. There you have it, right? Looks familiar. Kind of looks like the Loch Ness Monster. The only difference is they're not getting smaller. I like making them by hand. You get those smaller ones on the inside, so you get a little more variety. This way, you don't, but we're going to work around it. We're going to work around it. All right, so we got one, but wait, there's more. 
or you can put them on the bottom. Yeah, exactly. I did a cup not so long ago where I put them on the bottom draping down, on the top hanging, on the inside under the handle. You put them everywhere. There is no stopping. You just, you know, and if you don't like it, if you think it's too much, um, <laughs> and then you put this on it. No, that was just my scrap. I just rolled it off. I mean, you could if you wanted to. All right, so we've got two, because two is better than one. Pop that out. Now let's grab our plastic. Now, when I cut that out, if I had some saran wrap in the studio, I could have used saran wrap and put that on the clay first and then cut, and that would have kind of rounded over my edges. It would have done more of a pillowed shape. Um, we'll do that if we, we'll cut another one in a minute. And I'll, I'll use this, this plastic's a little too thick for it, but you can do that. All right, so we got one. So what's the name of the set on the packaging? These are, are from Wilton, so the manufacturer is Wilton. And I got them at Michael's, they were just two or three dollars, three or four dollars. This is the flower cutout, flower cutout, and the other one is just fondant cutout set. And the fondant cutout set is the succulent one, and the rose one was just the flower. All right, so you got two here. Clay is still very, very wet. Don't really have to slip and score. We're gonna lay them on top of each other and we're actually gonna stagger them. And I'm gonna put one on top of the other. We could have done that with this and I should have. The only reason I thought to do that was, oh, look right here. <laughs> look, I'll show you the other one too. Look, they, they show it layered and I never thought to layer them. So, yay Wilton, because you taught me something, or else I wouldn't have layered them. So once you have them on top, you know, these would make great edging for birdhouses and fairy houses too. So you, you can do all kinds of fun things with these. I think that would be great on a birdhouse. Can you imagine that hanging down, or sit, standing up wrapped around the base of a fairy house? All right. It does kind of look shrub, shrubbery. Get me a shrubbery. So we're just gonna roll this starting here, right? And then we're gonna roll the rest around and trying not to go too tight because you want, you want to have a little room. And as I'm rolling, I don't know if you can see, I'm kind of angling it, I'm kind of angling it outward a little bit. I didn't slip and score this because I have just rolled this clay out, like you saw me do it. So it's still pretty damp. All right, now we're going to pinch the base, securing it, All right? It, it will not crack, and I don't have to really worry about the joining issues because it's wrapped around like a cinnamon bun. You're not, you're not going to have a problem. All right, now we're going to take our little petals, and we're going to fluff them out a little bit. I'm just peeling them out a little bit. And, you know, you can always just do, do, do. This one here, I'm going to curl it a little. So look at that big fat rose. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, they could be roofing shingles for the fairy house. And you can make flowers after to stick on there too, because fairy houses should have flowers too. So look at the, if I had done this one that I made cutting, my, cutting by myself without the cutter, you know, if I didn't use this cutter here, I could have stacked two and got a fatter bloom. Right? Instead of wrap, I just usually keep wrapping more around is what I've always done. I've never done that layering. But look at the time saver you have there. And um, they look great. And yeah, there's a little bit of finish work. You know, you just want to go in and make sure any sharp edges, you tamp them down, smooth them down. And I would probably not mess with it too much now. I would let them set up until it's a leather hard. And then I would go in with my sponge. And if there was a sharp area, I would just take the corner of my sponge and I would just wipe it gently when it's leather hard and that'll smooth it over. Now the, the bottom, you gotta deal with the bottom somehow. You got some options. If you wanna make a bouquet and you wanna put a copper rod up in here or a bamboo a dowel, like you could use a bamboo skewer but I think maybe a little quarter inch dowel. So you're gonna make a little, let me smooth that off. You're gonna need to make a little hole Right? So you could go ahead and do that. If you have a dowel, use your dowel and just go up into it and just wiggle, 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 wiggle. 
right? Make sure it's bigger than whatever your, your dowel is because it's going to shrink about 12%. So go up a bit. And then right here, you've got a hole so that after it fires, you could then epoxy it on and you could stick that in something and you've just made a beautiful flower on a, on a stick. I do have a ceramic flower class where we make flowers a little differently than this and we put them on little copper wire. But this would be a great way to make a bunch of flowers right there. How cool, right? So not only can you put them on pots, you can put holes in the bottom. You could put them in your garden, put them in flower boxes. If you're getting snow like I am and we have zero spring happening, um, you know, make your own spring. Don't, don't wait for spring. Make your own. So there's the flower part. Um, let's do the succulents because those would be really fun. I have garden steaks or flower pot steaks. Yeah, I mean, just let your mind go because there's so many things you can make. I don't know. I'm going to keep that little twirly whirly thing. I think that would look cute stuck on a fairy house. It's just a little swirl. Okay, moving on because it's, uh, oh, we got plenty of time. Okay, I was worried. Whew. Whew. I was worried we were going to run out of time. All right, so that's the, I did the scalloped side for the flowers. This has a straight side and a scallop side. I will do one of each to show you. I personally really like the scallop side. So the Nancy asked, was the fairy house part of the totem class? Yes, we did. Well, we did uh, the second birdhouse she did this past Saturday. So Maria Sampson's whimsical garden stack class is what she's asking about. Um, that Maria Sampson, as I mentioned already, is doing. It's a three-parter. Part two was this past Saturday. Part three will be this coming Saturday. I don't know why I'm doing it that way. Hold on. I'm just push it on there. There. And she showed us how to make two types of birdhouses, but the second one could be a fairy house as well. And I, I used to do fairy houses with my, my um, after-school program kids when I was, was teaching that program. I never did it with my college students um, or my adult ed program because, uh, I don't know, we just didn't get to it. it. In college, it wasn't part of the curriculum, sadly. Should have been, but it wasn't. So here's the little smooth-sided guys that we get. See a little, sh you have a row of sharks swimming. You could cut these out by hand. They're just elongated triangles. Now, um, I got another little shortcut for you too, but we, we, I'm going to show you in a minute. Someone's going to say it before I get there. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> so the best kind of flowers that don't need watering or weeding and wouldn't end up dead. Yeah, I, I buy flower like plants, and I just, I love plants. I do. They don't do so well. If they live outside like uh, daylilies, I do very well with daylilies. Those are like the best. All right, so we got this one. And if your clay is sticky and you're having a hard time with the cutter, dust it with cornstarch. Use a little brush, like an old makeup brush or other kind of brush. You can brush it. Um, Maria did show a pouncer she made for hers, so you can make your own pouncer. Um, I'm going to cut another one because I want to show you guys something quickly too. So maybe you don't like succulents, but you love roses and you're like, well, um, I'm using the rolling pin because my hands, where I'm pressing, as you can see, the palm, of, the base of my palms, just I can't press this down. But you will be able to. I just can't right now. But I will eventually be able to. Just not today. I need to make a watering plant um, tender, like the watering bulb. Is that what you mean? Like you leave it out there and it. Um, my problem is I overwater them, not under. I, I give my plants root rot all the time. All right, so this is what I was going to show you. Uh, before I do the succulent, we're going to do something first. And we're going to use these two for the succulent. This is the smooth one, right? Could use the other one, but uh, I can't cut leaves. Okay. Okay, don't cut leaves. Use the cutter. Cut out the smooth side or the bumpy side of the succulent, and you got your leaves, and then you just stick them on your flower, right? So there you go. Have some leaves right there. Um, and so you can combine these two cutters, 
and not make succulents with them, you can make little, little leaves, right? So there you go, easy leaf cutter now. So you got, you got that. And then you can make a baby succulent with what's left over. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the rose ones. I'm gonna grab my plastic. I'm just gonna smooth these out. I would give cutting with saran wrap a try because it is sticky. And if you put cornstarch on it, it works, but it will dry them out. And we don't really want to dry them out too much. All right, I'm just gonna leave it that way. Line, line these guys up. Just like that. And then we're gonna start rolling. And I don't know, you roll whichever way you want. I think you can roll in or roll out. I, I'm an outward rolling kind of person, I guess. So we're just gonna roll. And as I'm rolling, I'm just thinking about spacing and I am adjusting my angle a little. So you're gonna get super fast succulent plants. And I was sad that they don't have other leaf shapes because I feel like, um, like this succulent that I made, I wish they had more of a truncated shape. I mean, I guess you can sculpt it and make it that way. You can change it up. So it comes together, so just smooth that out, just like that. And again, we have that kind of chunky bottom. You just pinch that together. And then, you know, you can make your plants round, or if you want to make them more of an oval, I'm gonna show you. If you want to make more of an oval, just squeeze that into an oval. And that way they're kind of longer like if you were gonna make a little pot for this to go in, it'd be an oval-shaped little mini pot for that to sit in. But we got, we got suckies right there. And I'm just gonna bend this out. How great does that look? And that was with the, the bumpy. Easy, easy peasy. And so uh, Jean Jeanette uses cornstarch on her cookie cutter. So she just dips these in. That's a, great, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. So easy to do these. And they look great. And they'll look even better once you glaze them. The base, you know, cut what you need to cut off. You don't want it too chunky. And again, we could do like I did. Was it this one? Which one? I put the hole in. If you wanted to have little mini succulents stuck in somewhere, you could put a hole in here and you could, you know, make it so that you could stick a little steak in there. It's up to you, right? An oval egg plate. You could put these on egg plates. Oh my gosh, uh, I'm gonna grab my egg plate. I have an egg plate out here um, in the studio showing it in something else and I left it out here. But you know my, my egg plate class, we make an egg, egg tray, right? So you could, oh, make an egg tray and you could, Stick some flowers. If you want flowers with leaves on it, you could stick those. When you're making it, when it's leather hard, attach some flowers and leaves to your corners to jazz it up, right? That would be beautiful. Why not? I mean, you, you're gonna find you can stick flowers on anything. So you put succulent leaves in your bird pockets and this way would be really quick. It would be so quick. And then you got this one right here, this onesie, this one little guy. Um, and just roll it up and make a tiny little, tiny little one, not a big one. So if you don't put the two together, you can make a smaller one, right? So you get this and just shape it till it's, you know, way you like. Looks good. That kind of looks a little, a little bit like a trillium flower, not quite, but a little bit, right? What's that? Little, little, little guy there. And so I wish they had these in multi sizes. I wish they had um, small, mediums, and large. I did look on Amazon for these. I couldn't find them. I did find a version of this, and they did have small, medium, and larges. And I put that in the Clayshare Amazon shop, I think. Did I send that to you, Kev? The link for these uh, rose cutters, flower cutters? <laughs> Okay, well, if it's not there now, I'll put it in. But they do make the rose ones in all the different sizes. Yeah, you're only limited by your imagination, Sherry. Sherry has one of the best imaginations, though. Do you know that Miss Sherry Auger, one of our Clayshare members, is an author? I'm gonna call, I'm gonna, gonna shine the light on her. 
<laughs> so yes. All right, so we did, we did them that way. Now I have other ways I've shown how to make flowers, but a really simple way is to take cookie cutters and you can use different flower petal shapes with each other. You don't have to just pick the same flower. This one is one I got on Amazon um, made by Fox Run. It's just called Flowers. That's it. Flowers. Any type of clay, you can use any clay you want. This is a B-Mix Cone 5 stoneware, but you could use earthenware. You, if you are watching this and you don't make pottery and you're finding me and you're like, what's this lady doing? Well, I'm making pottery, but you could use polymer clay. You could use air dry clay because these are sculptural. So any, any clay you have access to would work. So let's go ahead and I'm going to give it a try. Don't have saran wrap. Let's see if I can get through. And I've got to use this because I don't have strength to get through it with my bare hands. I think I got it. We're going to find out. Did we get through? It went through. So what happens when you use a cookie cutter with plastic? I prefer saran wrap. It pillows it. And this is a trick that potters have been using for quite a while, but it gives you that nice soft rounded edge instead of the sharp edge. Let me cut the next one without using the plastic and I'll show you the comparison. So you have both of those. Different shades of, of celadon look nice. Yes, they do. And I, I usually will actually take it up a notch and put a little green underglaze first and then a celadon on top. Of course, you can use nothing but underglaze if you want to, to make your, your suckies look cute. So see the difference in the edges here? Can you tell the difference? I don't know. It's a skinny little edge. but And then one more because we're going to do three. And that's kind of how I do these guys, my incense burners or incense holders. I have a really cute cookie cutter, and I just cut out three, and then I make the middle. Easy. You'll have people fooled. They think you're like a master sculptor. Now, there are people, and if you want to sculpt them the traditional way by each one petal at a time, do that. It's what you want to do. This is just, you know, you want to make flowers and you never thought you could? Well, you can. This will be good for you. And Sherry Auger rocks some beautiful dragonfly sculpture too. Yes. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to turn up my edges on this flower. And then we're going to turn the edges up on this one. We haven't even put it in, but you see where this is going, yeah? You see the direction this is headed? Now make sure you've smoothed your edges nicely before you attach them because it's really hard to go back in. Once they are all nested in each other, it gets really difficult. So we're going to slip and score, although you really don't have to. Be, be aware if you put too much slip, it'll get soft and crack. So, you know, just not too much. And then we're lining these up. So that they're staggered. And then we got the little baby here. Let's put this on. How do I link to my clay share on Amazon? Um, Kevin shared it, but I'll share it for everybody out there. If you go to Amazon and look for clay share, you're going to get nothing. Amazon just doesn't promote us. Um, and there's no way uh, for me to like um, do anything about that. So what the best thing to do is you type in amazon.com slash shop slash clay share. Let's, let's roll these up a little more. Just like that. How cute, right? And then again, stagger them. So now we have a flower. And then you need to do something in the middle. Well, we could do, wait, I think I got a tinier. Where did I put my, um, I do. Haha, <laughs> I have an even smaller. We're going to do another one. So we're going to do four. Why not? Wilton Easy Blooms Flower Cutouts and Wilton Succulent Fondant Cutouts. Yes. 
that's what they are, exactly. They're so easy. So, so easy. And then um, we'll do this one, and then we'll put the bead in the middle, like I have on my incense holder burner thingies. We'll do this little one, this teeny. I actually have a different serrated rib that has a point, which is nice for this, but it's not here. Don't know where it is. All right, so you got them all together, but you need to finish it somehow. And, and this is a little thick right here. They're a little thick, but that's, I mean, it's sculpture. So let's roll a ball. That's going to be too big. I'm going to go down a little. Maybe. Might be a little big, too. Let's go a little smaller. So my incense burner, the reason we have a ball in the middle and a, a little hole in the ball is so it holds your incense stick. See? You got your place to hold your incense stick right there. This could be an incense burner right here. Did you know? Now you do. So all you have to do is put a hole in it for your incense. And I actually usually use a stick of incense to do that. I'll stick that bead right here. And let me see if I can peel that up for a second. I want to show you something else. Come back. It's really stuck. Mm. I mangled the flower, but I wanted to show you something. So if you get to this point and you're thinking, I don't know if my layers are stuck really well, um, get a dowel and then just really press it in. And I just compressed that center. And then now we can put this back. I messed this up pulling it out, but we're going to put it back in. Yeah, it's kind of like a lily pad. And then we'll slip and score. This is too skinny to, for me to put that rib in, so we'll just use a needle tool. Slip and score. Someone asked where the Amazon shopping is. I'll put it on screen. Thank you. It's Amazon.com slash, slash shop slash clay share. So you have to go to Amazon slash shop, Amazon.com slash shop. Just follow Kevin's link. <laughs> so you get this guy right here like this. And if you want to make an incense burner, um, ideally you use a stick of incense and you just poke straight down. Now, if you burn cone incense, maybe you didn't put the bead in. If you did cone incense, maybe just use the dowel pressed down in the center and that'll be a place for your little cone to stand, right? So that would be great for cone incense, but you get this little incense burner like that. If it, you want stick incense, and if you want cone incense, leave the bead out. Your choice. How cute would that be sitting like on your dresser with a little incense or in your living room or something? And, you know, it looks beautiful when you're not burning incense in it. Cute it could be a cute candle holder, yes. But you could also take this flower, and, I mean, it's flat on the bottom. You could stick it on things. It would be um, big, but, you know, if you have something big, why not? Why not, right? So there's that. And then, uh, what time, where are we at for time? We got 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Whew. So close, so close. So I was going to show you the other way, which I think you know where this one is going because I talked about this. And I hadn't even opened these up. These are, I got them on Amazon. They're just some random, random cookie cutter, ruffly shapes right here. But they're cute. Right? So the other way is you have uh, the single petal option. And you're going to cut out your petals. And I think we'll go with three maybe of the small ones. And so you just cut them out. And again, that saran wrap would be nice because it will round your edges. A votive candle. Yes, it would be cute for a votive candle. Yes. That would be very sweet. So you take these guys right here, and we're going to shape them just like that. We made a petal. See? We're taking the bottom and just curling it towards itself. And then you take your next one. Remember how I said some, you can make it one petal at a time? So when people sculpt flowers, they always make a petal first. They don't just magically pinch a flower. They will make it one petal at a time, and then you join them. So there's your petal. There's your next petal. 
right? And then next, this is much more time consuming, but you can get more detailed. You can use varying petals. So there's benefits for this too. You can also go much bigger with this technique. So there is the smallest of this guy right here. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, I bought this set by itself. It came from China. It took like four weeks to get here or five weeks. It wasn't very much money. It just was, I think it came on a boat or maybe somebody swam it over. It took a while. So just know that sometimes when you order these cookie cutters, it takes forever. So I'm going to do three of each size. I'm going to cut out my three and then we'll build that flower. And you wait, when we get done, we're going to have a big, big flower. You love peonies. I love peonies too. They're one of my favorite flowers. I mean, I love, I, I don't have a flower I don't like actually. Come to think of it, it's kind of like pie. I like all flowers, I like all pie. And I don't know if we'll need more than, when you get bigger, you might need more to wrap around, but I'm just gonna start with three of each. And then we'll stack, I'm just gonna put them on, there we go. I'm not slipping and scoring. Um, don't really need to, because we're gonna be putting these on. The one thing, like I said, you wanna make sure you tamp your edge. So let's find out where I stopped. I stopped right there. So we're gonna go around right in here and attach it. And so you wanna line them up so that they're in that gap. These are gonna be beautiful. So you get lots of options, you know. For, for one little strip rolled up, that's gorgeous. Like that's so nice. And the fact that it's so easy to make and fast, you don't have, you know, if you're making mugs and you want to cute, put a cute little flower on it and you don't have 30 minutes to sculpt each one, that's a great way to go. This won't take 30 minutes though. This one here won't. So already, that's pretty nice. And you wanna see how the base is going? So we're just kind of twisting it and pressing in a bit. And making a, basically we're making a stem out of it, which if we're gonna put a rod in here at the end and stick it somewhere, this is perfect for that. All right, next, next size, next size up. I think the, I think the three of each size is gonna work perfectly. Yeah, so I have to tell you that um, when I, the ideas are endless, I see some people commenting. When I'm in the studio and I'm just in the studio brainstorming, this is how it goes, you know, I'm just, I'm trying everything I can think of with what I'm using and trying to figure out ways I can use it and I mean, I always say you have to give yourself permission to play. And don't be afraid to mess it up. Don't treat it too preciously. Because if you do, you won't be willing to take risks. And you need to be able to do that to go forward and to, to really explore new things. I take risks every day. Things work, things don't work. It's just how it goes. All right, we're gonna keep sculpting along. I had a little clay crumb get on there. Okay, you're now gonna be the back because that clay crumb's in the way. Let's stick this one here. And see, as I'm sticking it on, you curl this around a bit. Get how big, this is gonna be huge. So Joanne Fabric sometimes has cookie cutters and other items. Oh, not always, but sometimes. Well, that's good to know. There is a Joanne Fabrics about 45 minutes from me and the Michaels in the same place. They're at the, the same location. They're in the same shopping area. Where I live, we don't have anything. Like I live in the mountains of Vermont. I live in like, I live between three ski mountains between Bromley, Stratton, Magic Mountain, and then Okimo's up the road. So I, um, you know, everything is at least a 35 minute drive. <laughs> Look at that, oh my gosh, this is fabulous. 
I love it. And I haven't slipped and scored, but you see I am pressing and smoothing really well. If you're using yours and your petals are cracking, your clay is too dry, uh, if, if it's that dry, you would, you would really want to slip and score because if not, you will get some joining issues. Like the clay, it can seem fine now, but could pop off during the bisque. That would be bad. I live in the best area, nothing commercial. It's very rural, yes. Cows and chickens and the tractors, you know, going down the road. That's what you get here in Vermont. Look at this. So much. So, I mean, we can pull the petals out more and we can shape them a bit. You can curl them outwards so we can add more volume into them. So see how this one here has a little indent and then a curl where this one doesn't. So you can you know, put a little indent in with your thumb and then curl that edge a bit. We've got to put one more on. It's our last one. Let's stick that on over here. And so I did three petals, but if when I started I did four, I would have done four. If I wanted five, you could do five. So you can do as many petals as you want, and the more petals will give you, you know, fuller, much fuller blooms here. Have you seen the flower maker cut the petal like that, and then there's silicone? Bit? Yes, I have the veiners. I have a set. Um, Sugar Blossom makes them, and oh, I don't know where my, I didn't bring my Sugar Blossom set. I'm looking around. That's not here yet. We'll play with Sugar Blossom. Um, We'll play with the Sugar Blossom set soon because I got that from them and they have the veiners. Yeah, so it, when you cut it out, what you do is you put the vein in and then you cut it and it's, it's really cool. So you can go in and give your flower a little more, your petals a little more personality as you're working with them because you want that. You don't want them to be stiff. I'm going to curl these, curl these leaves over a bit. And also it gives you a chance to soften any edges that are rough. And then add your leaves, right? And then put some leaves on. Exactly, exactly. So it's completely, there it is, so you, all, you guys can see Look how big that is. And that's a three. I, I think a four or a five would be gorgeous because you can really see it's a three right there. But if you did a four or a five, wow. How fun is that? So do I think when them, they're drying, will it crack? What I would do, and let's, let's talk about the bottom now. So I have been the whole time, I don't know if you all noticed, doing this. As I'm joining each petal, do you see how I'm smoothing the stem downward so that it blends it in? So if you look at it from the side, it's really nice to look at. It's not um, like, you know, looks disjointed because you see where they come together. And so I have a really nice join, so I know all the petals are in there nicely, but I would put this in plastic. I would wrap this in plastic to dry this. I'm not going to leave this just sitting out. No, because I think there could be, there's going to be drying. I want it to dry evenly. All right, so now we have our base. Let me just finish smoothing this over. And I'm just barely holding this. I'm not putting, I'm not grabbing it all here. I'm just basically resting it on my hand. And smooth this over. Oh, it's six o'clock. All right, gotta, gotta get done, gotta get done. So you can leave it slightly rounded if you want, right? Like, like a base would be of a real flower. And then you make, you know, your hole. I'm gonna do this and then we'll just, I don't have my hole cutter. Wait a minute, let me check. Did I bring a hole cutter? Mm -hmm. That's a big no. Darn it. Okay. I know. I have to get my hand building tools. I don't have them. Um, I would take a hole cutter. I mean, you can do this with a needle tool. It's not perfect. And I would cut my chunk out, right? And then that way, I don't want to crush this needle tool end in here because then I'll crush my beautiful blossom. So I'm not going to do that. Now, you could put... Um, you know, the little bits in here if you wanted to. 
but they're so dainty and tiny. I think tiny. I think I'd wait and add anything onto it after it's been fired, if I wanted to put anything like that in there. But look at what we can do. I mean, you can play with it and twist it, and I mean, look at that. That is so nice. I love I love the little bit of a wave you can get going in there, and change it up. Maybe that one comes up there and goes down over here. I don't know. You know, you play with them a little bit. Um, if you find you're having a lot of cracking issues, you can slip and score when you add them. But this one right here, I'm just going to sit here. I have a board. Let's put everything. Okay, let's look at everything we did. We did this beautiful big one right here. Honestly, I don't want to sit it down. Uh, what I'm going to do, <laughs> I have this little cup. That's too big. Don't have a cup. I have this pitcher. Much better. <laughs> so I'm going to put it in the pitcher to dry so that it, it dries and is not laying on its side. So we did that flower. We did all, well, I did a couple before, but you know, we did this one, we did this. Look at all these awesome things we did in this short period of time. And yeah, I would do for drying, just drape it with plastic. Basically, this is enough. I can make a little tent, right? And that lets it dry nice and evenly. And then that's it. It's done. Voila. Magic. So I think they'll be fine if you just let them. I'm going to pull you guys back up so we can get this. Be a little crooked maybe. But um, yeah, so I would definitely cover them to let them dry nice and slow. Because this is B-Mix, if I was using a, a um, earthenware maybe, a gritty stoneware, I might not be so worried, but B-Mix is a porcelainous stoneware. So because it has so much kaolin in it, which is china clay, which is what makes porcelain porcelain, um, it has those fine particles, it's more prone to cracking. So yeah, covering them up and letting them dry slowly will help you a lot. So any cookie cutter that you can get a set of like three or four different shapes so that you can do the smaller to bigger will work to make something like this one. Here's another one that we did the flatter one with, but I could have curled these up if I wanted to more, right? Easy peasy. Um, I do use these punch out fondant cutters sometimes. I just don't have any here. And then these two were the winners of the night right here. These two things. Uh, I love these. They're fabulous. They will change your, your plant making, succulent making life. I promise. <laughs> So, all right, so when you cut the bottom off, does it compress the joints at all? Um, I mean, I think as you're cutting it, mm, oh, does it compromise? Sorry. Um, no, no, I don't think so because I've already smoothed it out. And then you go back like I'm doing now and you just tap on it and make sure that it's not sharp where you've cut it. And then if you want to make sure it's sitting, just tamp, 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 tamp until it's nice nice flat bottom. There you go. So it's not going to be wibbly wobbly firing in the kiln. Super easy, simple sculpted flowers and succulents. They would get, be lovely in a raku kiln. Yes. And um, for those of us coming at the end, this broadcast started at five. So an hour ago, it went a little long. I showed you one, two, three, four, five ways to make flowers. Maybe more. I can't remember, but at least five. So that's pretty awesome. All right, everybody, that's it this week. Go ahead and check out all those classes on ClayShare that show you how to sculpt flowers, which is kind of like what I did, but in a, in a formal class. And uh, check out Maria's Whimsical Garden Stacks workshop. These flowers would come in handy in that. And also check out Sunshine Cobb's workshop coming up in June. That's going to be fabulous for hand builders. You want to check that out. And then my new ClayShare class which was all about clays that came out yesterday and we got more coming, so stay tuned. All right, everybody, take care and get out there and make yourself some great pots.